Hello everyone. Uh, as our listeners may be aware, India has introduced a new landmark legislation, the Digital Personal Data Protection Act. Uh, it is the first comprehensive legislation dealing with data protection in India. Uh, as the name suggests, this law only applies to digital personal data, which is data about an individual who is identif- identifiable by or in relation to such data. It does not apply to uh, offline data. Uh, now this law introduces several compliance obligations in relation to digital personal data. Uh, the ministry has indicated that there will be a short compliance time period for for most businesses. So it's important for businesses to understand the compliances and to also gear up for compliance under this law. I'm joined today by uh, two members of our expert data protection team who will take us through, you know, the key stakeholders under this law and the key compliance obligations and expectations on these stakeholders under this law. So without further ado, um, I would like to introduce Purushottam and Rhythm. Um, hi Puru, hi Rhythm. And uh, we can kick things off by asking uh, some questions. Uh, so Puru, over to you first. Uh, who are the stakeholders in the data ecosystem? Thanks, Tanisha. Uh, good to be here and uh, discuss some of the important aspects of this uh, new data law. Uh, to answer your question on stakeholders, there are three main categories of uh, stakeholders who are uh, subject to certain regulations and compliance requirements under this law. The first central stakeholder being the data principle which is the individual to whom the personal data relates to. This individual or a natural person can also be a child, in which case it also includes the parent or lawful guardian of the child. And it can also be a person with disability, in which case it includes the lawful guardian of the person with disability. So data principles, again, are natural persons and uh, not legal persons. The second uh, main stakeholder under this law is the data fiduciary, which is a person who either by uh, themselves or in conjunction with another person determines the purposes and means of processing of personal data. It's a dual requirement to determine who is a data fiduciary. And there can also be a situation where there are joint data fiduciaries, which means that if both persons are in conjunction determining means and processing of uh, personal data, then there could be joint data fiduciaries. The law recognizes a special category as a significant data fiduciary. It could be either a single data fiduciary, which is classified as such, or it could be a a whole category or class of data fiduciaries as they are notified by the central government to be significant data fiduciaries. And these uh, factors could be uh, and uh, you know, so the central government could assess certain things like the volume of personal data process, the sensitivity of such data, the effect it has to the ele- risk it has to the electoral democracy, the impact it has on the sovereignty and in- integrity of India, uh, public order. So there are certain grounds that are specified under the law to le- to empower the government to notify certain data fiduciaries as significant data fiduciaries. And these significant data fiduciaries, of course, have some enhanced compliance requirements under the Act. The third main bucket of stakeholders under this Act is the data processor. And this data processor is any person who processes personal data on behalf of a data fiduciary. So these are the three main stakeholders under this new data law. Great, great. That was insightful, Puru. Uh, so you've explained to us, you know, who the key stakeholders uh, are under this law. Now, my next question to you is, out of these three stakeholders, who are the key compliance requirements on under this new law? Yeah, that's an interesting question, Tanisha. Unlike a lot of global data protection laws, the Indian DPDP Act puts the obligation of compliance under this act mainly on the data fiduciary and it is the responsibility of the data fiduciary to carry out or to comply with any provisions or any rules that are made under this act and this is with regard to any of the processing either the data fiduciary does itself or it has engaged some data processors to do that processing and while the compliance is with the data fiduciary the data fiduciary can of course enter into a valid contract with these data processors 
uh, to in- involve them and have them process their data on their behalf. But again, while there are contracts that the data fiduciary can enter into with data processors, irrespective of any such contracts, it's the obligation of the data fiduciary to comply with under this act. Uh, there are, uh, on a passing note, there are also some obligations on uh, data principles being the other stakeholder. And this is mostly uh, in relation to either compliance or in relation to, you know, not uh, filing fr- frivolous complaints or not impersonating any person uh, while, while providing their personal data and for verifying authentic, uh, sorry, submitting verifying ver- verified information, authentic information, etc. Great. That is interesting. Um, so now that you have told us that, you know, the key uh, person who is responsible for compliance under this law is the data fiduciary. Rhythm, coming to you now, what are the compliance requirements which are applicable to the data fiduciary? Thank you, Tanisha. That is a very important question. And as Puru has already explained to us, data fiduciaries are required to ensure compliance with the Data Act as well as the rules made under it. I want to point out how Compliance with the data law is an absolute obligation on such data fiduciaries, which means that irrespective of any agreements that a data fiduciary might have entered into contrary to the obligations applicable to them, or the fact that the data principal is not complying with their uh, obligations under this law, the data fiduciary will have to ensure compliance with the obligations or compliances that I will now be discussing. So the major compliances under this law include seeking consent and giving privacy notice to the data principles. And the privacy notice contains elements like grants for processing of personal data and grievance redressal options or mechanisms that a data principal might exercise in case it doesn't need to. Uh, Although such consent and notice requirements are only applicable in cases apart from the legal basis of processing of personal data based on the prescribed legitimate uses under this law. Also, we know that one of the primary ideas behind this law is to control the misuse of personal data as well as the prevention of data breaches. So for this, the data law has two main obligations, one of them being implementation of reasonable security safeguards to prevent data breaches. And these security safeguards may include elements like uh, inculcating firewalls in the system, intrusion detection tools, and comprehensive risk assessments that data fiduciary might undertake. In addition to this, there is also a requirement to implement appropriate technical and organizational measures to adhere with the obligations that we are discussing under the data law. And these technical and organizational measures uh, may include elements like restricted access protocols, encryption of personal data, and uh, implementing alarm systems or inculcating alarm systems uh, in a data fiduciary's mechanism. Uh, Now coming to a situation where a data principal's data is used to make a decision that may affect them or is disclosed to another data fiduciary, the data fiduciary is required to ensure accurate accuracy, completeness and consistency of the personal data that is stored with them. So these were the primary obligations on a data fiduciary in a nutshell. Now coming to the additional obligations applicable to them, in case there is a data breach, The data fiduciary is required to notify of such breach to the data protection board as well as the data principles. And unless data retention is required under any law applicable at that point in time, the data fiduciary is required to erase the data principles personal data if such data principle has withdrawn their consent or it is reasonable for the data fiduciary to assume that the specified purpose for which this data was collected or is being stored is no longer being served. In such a case, the data fiduciary is also required to ensure the erasure of personal data made available to the data processors if the data fiduciary engages with any data processors or has engaged with any in the past. Uh, We know how Puru has discussed that a data processor might enter into a contract with a, a data fiduciary might enter into a contract with a data processor in case they wish for a data processor to process the data on their behalf. In such a case, it is the data fiduciary's responsibility or obligation to make sure that the contract they enter into is valid in nature. Uh, Coming to a separate class of data fiduciaries, which Puru has already touched upon, which are significant data fiduciaries, uh, I want to point out how significant data fiduciaries have to comply with all the uh, requirements or obligations that we have discussed so far. 
but in addition to that the significant data fiduciaries also have to make sure that they appoint a data protection officer and an independent data auditor along with conducting of data protection impact assessments uh, a lot more guidance on the compliance requirements applicable for the stakeholders in the data ecosystem as per the data law can be found under the under the rules and that is all from my end over to you tanisha thanks to them for that very comprehensive overview of you know the key obligations of data fiduciaries under this law and thanks to them and puru and thanks to all our listeners for joining us